Hi everyone. How are you doing? So it is really good to see such a good number in first class. I hope this number continues uh, even to the last class. So welcome everyone. I hope uh, my uh, my voice is audible to everyone, right? Okay. Okay, great. So welcome and um, I hope you are doing good. So let's get started with our first class. Okay. So uh, let me first tell you that, uh, uh, I mean, even if it is your first class, I'm, I'm expecting that after the scholarship test, maybe some of you, some of the people who have joined uh, really recently, uh, they might be having their, oh, their first class as a live class, right? So uh, don't worry, even if it is your first class of go classes, or even if it is your first class of gate preparation, then also you don't need any prerequisites. So whatever we are going to teach here, if that doesn't, I mean, uh, either uh, it will be needing some, some prerequisites, then I will tell you that, okay, this is the particular video or this is the particular concept that you need to study uh, from this particular video, right? And most of the things that I can say that 99% of the things will not be needing any prerequisites, but sometimes I might ask you to refer in C programming, like what is struct and all, maybe, maybe, okay. If, if you're interested, then you can refer it sometimes. I will tell you that uh, when to refer. Okay, but mostly uh, you 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 can be very much worry free. It uh, it will be like uh, like you you can study this as a very very much first course of your good preparation. Okay, so let's get started with the operating systems. So I hope you all are excited as me. So uh, like most of you might be knowing me because you are already enrolled in, in the Go classes, but still if you need, I can uh, I can just give you the quick introduction. So uh, my name is Sachin. Okay. Sachin Mittal. I have uh, I have secured gate all India rank 33 in 2017. And after that, I have been into IISC in CSA department. There is a department called Computer Science and Automation in CSA department. I was there uh, from 2017 to 2019. And after, uh, after ISC, I have worked at a uh, Xerox labs as a research engineer. And after Xerox lab, I have worked at Amazon as an applied scientist. So, uh, mostly, uh, I have worked in machine learning in, in both of the companies and even at ISC, my, most of the courses were oriented towards the machine learning. So that is why, like you can say that, uh, my, one of the favorite course or one of the, you know, top rated courses is engineering mathematics, because th that is where I am having natural bias. So, um, like you, if you have seen the engineering mathematics, then it is good. Otherwise, like, uh, don't worry about it. You can see it later. Okay. So can everyone turn off their videos or let me just uh, do it from here. Okay. So, uh, so this is me Sachin. Okay. So let's get started with the operating systems. Now, uh, before I uh, really delve into the content, let me just tell you that what are the books that you can refer. Although you want to be requiring any book as such to refer. So whenever, uh, like, I mean, this, you can say that these are the books that I am referring. Okay. So I will be referring a couple of books, which is Galvin, William Stalling, Tannenbaum. And there is one more book that is called three easy, uh, easy pieces. So, uh, honestly, I have not uh, read that book yet, that three easy, uh, easy pieces, but I have, uh, got some good reviews about this particular book. So that's why I will be following this book. Like uh, till now I have not read this book. So, uh, like I will be, uh, I will be referring this book and I will see if I can draw some useful content from this book also. Okay. I have, uh, I have seen these books, Galvin, William Stalling and Tenmum last year, like, uh, with Vishal, I have, I have went through these books, but, uh, but for me also this particular big book, which is operating system, the three, three easy pieces will be, uh, something new. Okay. So I will also be, uh, reading it first time, but anyway, you don't need to read any, any, any of the book. We will be just uh, compiling all of the resources, which are, which are needed from all of these books, uh, in the slides. Okay. But I'm just telling you that in case, if you want, you can refer these books. Now, as per the gate syllabus, these are the few, uh, few things in the operating system that we have. One is, uh, one is like uh, system calls and uh, then processes, threads, inter-process communication and concurrency uh, management, uh, synchronization, deadlock, and these all the, all the topics we have. So 
I mean, this is the exhaustive list that we have from the gate syllabus, but uh, we want to be uh, studying all of these, uh, all of these topics in a sequence that is written here, which means that uh, it is not necessary that we will be first studying system calls and then process and like that, right? So uh, our order of study might differ, but eventually we will be covering all of the gate PYQs along with the complete syllabus. But our order of uh, teaching, our, our order of study might differ. I mean, whatever logical, uh, logical seems to me or, or according to the books the, uh, in that logical particular order i will be teaching okay cool so uh okay let's get started uh with our first question let's suppose that uh i mean obviously you must be first of all wondering that what is an operating system i will answer that question but before that i will just ask you one thing let's suppose that you have one program okay uh have you heard about the c programming you might have heard about it, right? There is a language C programming. Okay. So let's suppose you, you write a program in C programming, maybe anything. Let's suppose the program is foo.c. Okay. So, or, or anything foo.c. This is some C program. It could be as simple as uh, you, 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 you would like to think about, which means it could be just like hash include std io dot h and inside the main function, you can just write printf. I mean, just a simple, simple C program. Okay. Printf hello. Okay. So suppose this is your first C program that you have now, like once you write the C program, then what you need to do, you need to execute it or, uh, or first you need to compile it. Right? So for the compilation, you need to do one thing, which is called compiler. I mean, generally this compiler, when I'm saying the compiler, there are different modules that, uh, we have talked about in C programming, but you don't need to worry about it. But, uh, like I'm just telling you here that there are different modules, uh, which are assembler, which are preprocessor and all like ultimately it get compiled linking and all. Okay. So suppose that after the compiler, you get some file, which is called executable file. Executable file means what that you can directly run this file. Okay. So, so basically there is some file, uh, let's suppose this is a dot out or foo.out or whatever. So there is one uh, foo.c, which is your C program file. And after the compilation, you got a.out. Is this clear to everyone? Which is called executable file. Okay. So uh, after compiler, you will, you, you, you will, you will be getting this file and that is called executable file. So what do I mean by the executable file? Can anyone tell me what is meant by the executable file? What is meant by executable file? Uh, zero ones. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's one ac acceptable answer that it is, it is having zeros and ones. And by the way, those who are really wondering that, uh, uh, what is this executable file, how to compile and all, uh, those who are really wondering, I will just suggest you to watch one of our lecture, which is uploaded on uh, YouTube. This is a 50 minute of lecture. The lecture name is generally of a program. Okay. From writing to running. So just watch that lecture uh, and uh, you can just search this lecture on the Go Classes channel and the title could be the journey of a program, big picture or, or something like that, right? So just watch that lecture and after the le lecture, you will get to know that what is, uh, what is this executable, oh, sorry, what, what is this executable file? What is the compiler and how we are getting it? Although it is not absolutely necessary for operating system just to study operating system, but still I will, I will just suggest you that if you can go through this particular lecture, then it will be useful. Okay. So this is, the uh, I can say this is the only prerequisite that I need for the operating system. Just a small prerequisite, just a 50 minute of video. Okay. Just, just watch it. Okay. Uh, as I'm saying that it is not hard, hard prerequisite, but still, if you watch it, it is, it is useful. Cool. So, uh, what are the answers that I have got here? Let, let me just read out those answers. So some people are saying that, uh, this is a standalone file that can run on a machine. Yes, that is true. We can run it. Yeah, it is. It, it could be runnable. Yes, that is true. But, uh, let me just dig more into that. So basically, I mean, it is having a particular structure, right? It is, it is very well framed structured file, a very well framed structured, very well structured file, which means that, uh, which means that operating system knows that from where, I mean, uh, there are some particular special syntaxes. So why that operating system will, uh, will get to know that where is the main, main function? I mean, where is the main function, right? Because operating system, as you, as you might be knowing the running will start from the 
main function right running uh, if you are running a program it cannot be from the any arbitrary function it will be from the main function so basically it is a very well structured file such that such that i can say like such that main function i mean this is just one example of the structure that i am telling you that main function location should be known to operating system right and we can directly run it okay and we can directly run it so basically this is this is called executable file anyway the uh, story is here like that that we have got some executable file after the compiler okay now what does this executable file means it could be a.exe or a.out it depends on your operating system if you are having unix or linux operating system then uh, then it is a.out or if you are having a windows then it is a.exe right now uh, now let me just continue this story so basically you had uh, you had some c program which is basically printing hello right maybe printf printf hello and which is foo.c now you compile it and let's just skip all of these stories that how we are compiling how we are getting this particular uh, particular file which is called uh, a.out or foo.out or whatever right so basically this is executable file And this is we got after the compilation, right? After the compiler. And the total details that how we are getting after the compiler can be found in the 50 minute video. Okay. Can be found in 50 minute video. Okay. Details in 50 minute video. I mean, if you want, then you can just watch the details. This is again, this is optional. You don't need to do it, but if you want, you can do it. Okay. This is optional, optional study. Anyway, coming to this part, so you got uh, uh, you got this particular file which is called executable file. Now, what you need to do, you need to run this file, right? So, how to run this file? You will be basically loading that in the main memory. So, there is something called main memory. So, whatever you want to uh, run or whatever you want to execute or whatever data you want to process, that has to be in the main memory. So basically there are some hardware, like we will talk about the hardware also, uh, like, I mean, the subject is like that only that we have to connect the dots. Okay. Initially in one, two lectures, we have to connect the dots, which means that we will be, uh, uh, we might be, I mean, you might be thinking that uh, I'm going uh, back and forth. Like uh, sometimes I'm talking about the hardware, sometimes the operating system, but eventually in one, two classes, you, you will, uh, you will connect all the dots. Okay. So because this operating system and computer organization both goes together. So basically we need to, we need to deal with the hardware. So this is the study of hardware study of hardware and this is basically a study of software you can say okay so here we will be i mean here uh, deepak sir will be teaching you um, the hardware components like cpu main memory cache secondary storage input output many things right all the hardware components how they interact and all but operating like uh, who who uh, enable those interactions right operating system so basically whenever i'm whenever i'm talking about the operating system uh, by default i need to talk about the hardware okay anyway uh, this these things will get clear a um, little later so basically what i'm saying here is that that you have uh, you have this executable file which is a dot out is this clear till now is this clear to everyone okay okay so akash is saying extension doesn't matter a dot out or something it will be operating system specific okay as i am saying it is very well structured file which means it should be known to operating system like this file everything about this file everything about this file is very much operating system dependent right i mean everything every every like uh, everything means like uh, what is the structure of this file where does the code start if there is any data where where is the data what are the st static variables how how you are de declaring those static variables whatever right so everything about this file should be very much transparent to operating system so that's why these extensions are very much operating system dependent so basically uh, tell me can you uh, can you run this a.exe uh, extension on the on the linux machine on the Linux machine, can you run this? No, the answer is answer is no. Why? Because this a.exe is, is having certain structure, which Linux might not be doing, right? This a.exe is very much particular structure to windows, which Linux might not be knowing. 
no it is not about just renaming renaming okay i will be uh, i will be uh, speaking slow so uh, what i'm saying uh, see this this is not about this extension extension doesn't matter at all okay whatever extension you you put in it is just a way for the operating system to tell that it is an executable file extension doesn't matter inside the inside the file what is the structure that matters right okay so just uh, summarizing everything like we have just started with only one picture which is that you have foo.c right you have foo.c and then after compilation you got a dot out is this okay to everyone yes rohit uh, rohit is asking compiler creates an operating system dependent executable file yes that is very much true so basically compiler i mean you don't need to know these information but yes compiler creates operating system dependent file and that is why some compilers let's suppose there is some compiler that is uh, that is a windows uh, i mean that, that can be installed on windows but might not work on the uh, on the linux right because that compilers are also operating system dependent there is a deal between operating system and the compiler right whatever compiler is producing should be very much known to operating system so yes that is true that compiler produce this file which is operating system dependent okay rohit cool so uh, you got this file now you need to load this file in the main memory okay so there is something called main memory where you need to load this file right this is called loading now there are certain things which is uh which is that what is this loading and what is this main memory okay so uh, for now, like since it is it is a complete topic in uh, in computer organization, the hardware that we will talk about here will be in just you know terms like main memory. There is a CPU, there is a main memory, uh, there is a cache, there is an input output device. We might talk about the hardware, but the actual study of those hardwares will be in the computer organization. So don't worry much uh, about these hardware hardware part, like what is main memory and all. Okay. So main memory, you can just think is like, basically, uh, have you, uh, have you heard about RAM? Have you, uh, have you heard about RAM? Random access memory. So this is the main memory. Basically, whatever, whatever you are running in your current, uh, current, uh, laptop, which means let's suppose you are currently uh, watching this lecture on the zoom. Okay. So zoom is running. Let's suppose some browser is running, whatever is running is actually in the main memory that has to be in the main memory. Whatever is running is has to be in the main memory. Okay. So that's called uh, something main memory. We might talk about the main memory later, but for now, let me, uh, uh like, uh, I mean, idea of this particular lecture is to basically motivate you that why we are even studying operating system okay why we even need operating system so that is the total idea of this particular lecture and brief history about the operating system what should be the uh, functionality that operating system should implement and these kind of ideas i want to discuss in two days lecture okay so basically you need to load this program in the main memory and then uh then cpu will do one thing so let's suppose you are loading this program here right you're loading this program here uh, which is a dot out then cpu will read the first instruction this is the first instruction let's suppose cpu will read this first instruction and based on that it will behave i mean whatever you want to do right so that's how uh, uh, like a smooth process goes on is this little idea uh, okay to everyone we will talk about it in more detail but as far as this particular picture is concerned is this okay Okay. So what I'm saying is basically nothing that you have a program, you compile it, you load it. That's all. Okay. You compile it, you load it. CPU will be basically executing each line one by one. That's all I'm saying here. Okay. Now you can see from this picture, I mean, this picture might look little complex uh, because uh, there are some components of the memory, a stack heap and, and these things. Okay. But yeah, there is a a dot out, which is having data and instructions and this is very well defined that where is the data where is the instruction and in the instructions also where is the main function it is very well structured file okay so this a dot out is very well structured file now uh this is cpu or processor this is cpu which will be let's suppose you are loading this uh, instructions here cpu will be reading the instruction and based on that it will be behaving i mean this is uh, a small picture i can say okay cool let me see the doubt the compiled file is only operating system or computer architecture dependent too. Okay. 
so uh, i mean this is a little complex question i think because here you need to understand the instruction set architecture also so let me just skip this question for now okay you will get the answer in maybe uh, two three lectures or maybe after the computer organization you will get these kind of answers so uh, let me know if you have uh, any question with respect to this particular small slide i mean you are compiling and then you are loading okay that's all you need to do now uh, now let me just move further so that's what you can see okay so basically uh, this cpu is 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 having in inside the cpu you are having okay little summary uh, this is the only summary let me just summarize what what i'm saying that you are having a file okay food or c let me just summarize it you are having a file which you compile then you get a dot out which you load in the main memory and cpu will be executing it so you load it okay after the compilation this is the summary and let's suppose you are loading it here this is a dot out and wherever the instructions are so basically cpu will be executing the instructions okay so this is this is all summary that we have is this okay to everyone okay okay so let's move further now uh, what is cpu basically cpu is having uh, a different different components in it which means cpu is having something called as arithmetic logical unit cpu is having something called as uh, memory management unit i am not writing the full form neither it is written in the in the slides uh, the reason is that because it's not a operating system uh, course part okay what is cpu all of these components you will get to study in computer organization this is one hardware component which uh, which we will be calling sometimes cpu sometimes processor okay so uh, it is itself having some register some control unit some uh, memory management unit uh, arithmetic logical unit and the different different other hardware parts okay but uh, as i'm saying that we will be studying that in the computer organization okay cool but let's just look at this picture so what this picture is doing that let's suppose this is your a dot out i mean this is not exactly a dot out uh, a dot out is basically having zeros and ones but uh, but just for the sake of simplicity i am writing in that way but anyway that's okay so basically what i'm saying that this is your a dot out okay which is in the which is in the main memory now there are three instructions or three things that cpu keep on doing it infinitely okay this is a infinite cycle i mean cpu will do these three things infinitely again uh, like i'm sorry but these are the part of a computer organization that's why we cannot go in the much detail here because it's, it's not even needed so in the computer organization you will study these three uh, three uh, i can say the set of instructions uh, as a part of cpu cycle so basically cpu will be fetching decoding and executing okay at every time so can you see uh, something called as clock here can you see some clock here so basically clock is again a hardware component okay it, it is again a hardware hardware and uh, so basically it uh, what it does it generates a clock at uh, i mean it generates a cycle at a certain frequency okay so basically at every clock tick at every clock tick this fetch and at next clock tick this decode at next clock tick this execute happens so basically this fetch fetch decode and execute these are the three things that cpu keep on doing it okay it will be fetching the instruction from the main memory inside the uh, inside the can you guess it like uh, where it will be fetching this is the main memory from where cpu will be fetching the instructions where it will be fetching in its own register yes cpu is having its own register so where it will be fetching it and then will decode it that what it is written and based on that it is it will be executing let's suppose that uh, the instruction is print f hello word then it will be just printing it okay execution part will just print it and it will keep on return uh, keep on keep on repeating the same thing uh, 
if this program is finished then for the next program for the next program based on the i mean there is something called program counter value based on the program counter value it will be keep on fetching decoding and executing so this is called infinite cycle okay this is an infinite cycle in which in which cpu will be doing i mean uh, will be uh, behaving basically okay so basically let me just go to this particular slide so what is happening here you load it in the main memory and then cpu will be again and again fetching decoding executing fetch decode execute fetch decode execute will be keep on doing it okay now uh, i hope uh, this particular slide is clear and inside this slide i have just added one thing which is that cpu will be keep on doing three things fetch decode execute right so cpu will we keep on doing three things which is fetch decode execute okay uh, someone is asking what happens in decode phase so basically uh, there is something called op code or something okay i mean you will get to study those things in the in the oper uh, in the computer organization that what is that op code based on the op code it will see that okay what kind of instruction it is right it is move it is load or whatever in instruction it is so you will get to study that what is this decode in the uh, in the computer organization so basically this fetch decode uh, and execute this is a part of computer org organization so i am just telling you that uh, i mean you can just understand these things as a part of english okay just just like a english language you can understand that it will be fetching it fetch means like just taking it just just as an english language okay just understand as an english language it will be fetching it then decode it okay what is written what is this instruction doing based on that it will be executing it okay just like a normal english you can understand so basically this is the whole summary that we have currently right okay so what do you think once you load it then uh who is loading it first of all operating system right operating system operating system like i will tell you that how it is doing it or uh, doing it but don't worry i mean uh, for now just follow my words that operating system is basically loading it and then uh, who is basically going to set this uh, there is something called program counter value and these things right i mean who is going to set those program counter value to pc plus 1 or something like that i mean uh, to the next instru next instruction it will be going all, all of these things who who is doing it operating system right so basically operating system is loading it operating system is basically asking cpu to fetch it and yeah cpu will be decoding it and then um, then operating system will be basically incrementing the pointer uh incre inc incrementing the program counter what is the program counter basically program counter tell you that which is the instruction which you need to fetch right uh, suppose currently you need to fetch this this instruction then pc is here then you need to fetch the next instruction then pc will be here right like that so basically all of this job is done by operating system okay now let's just do one thing let's uh, if that is clear then then i will i will tell you to one to do one thing but before before that let me know if if that is clear or there is some confusion here so basically you are compiling you get a dot out right okay now tell me uh, i have one doubt here tell me after how long you get uh, you get a dot out after how long you need to load after 1 minute 5 minute instantaneously 1 year 2 year after how how long you need to load yes so basically once you compile it then my question is that after after how long you need to load right okay so the answer of this question is that whenever we want to right so we can load it whenever we want to we can run this program whenever we want to basically you you are basically uh, having some uh, food or see you compile it and maybe after one year you want to run it can you run it yes definitely maybe after one year you you, uh, you want to run it then can you run it yes after one minute you want to run it this yes you 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 can you can basically run it after one one minute also so basically it depends on you whenever you want it right so answer is whenever we want it okay okay i don't know where to write this answer but let me just
whenever we want it right so basically once you uh, once you have the compiled file then then after that maybe after one hour after one minute after one year five year any time any time you can run it is this okay to everyone yes double click is one of the way so Pradeep is saying that uh, can we do it uh, using the double click? Yes, if uh, uh, if I mean it depends on the operating system. If your uh, operating system allows allow you, then you can do it. I mean uh, generally in most of the operating system now, obviously it is it is done using the double click. But in early days uh, there was no uh, UI interface, right? Then uh, all the things has to be done using the command in early days. But now you can double click it and then you can run it. Yes, definitely. Okay. So I hope uh, this particular picture is clear that you are compiling and, and then you are loading. So operating system is doing couple of tasks for you. What is the task loading it, incrementing the program counter. And, and this is just a simple program, but there could be many, many complex tasks that operating system might be doing for you. Okay. So let's just do one thing. Let's just see that suppose if we want to run a simple program, okay. Suppose if you want to run a simple program. Uh, which is, uh, which, which may be adding, uh, adding some numbers, right? Uh, maybe adding two numbers only. And uh, let's suppose you want to do it without operating system. Okay. Running a simple program on CPU without operating system. Let's suppose how, how does it go? Okay. So you have the compiled file, which, which may be, let's suppose a dot out. And now you want to, uh, you want to run this without operating system. Is the objective clear to everyone that what we want to do? We still want to run it, but there is no operating system support uh, for you, right? Now, what you will be doing? You will be probably uh, first uh, basically setting the program counter, right? Program counter is some uh, register. Uh, basically, that will uh, that will just I mean CPU will just look at the program uh, program counter value to fetch the instruction basically. Okay. If, even if you are not understanding what is program counter, don't worry. You can just understand that PC is a, uh, is a register. Yes. So basically what are the, what are the steps that you, you must need to follow? Yes. So basically setting, setting the PC. I mean, these are the only, I think, uh, the few things that I'm writing, but uh, there, there might be much more things, right? But still setting a PC to start of main. Right. Then, uh, then, uh, CPU will be fetching it. And, uh, let's suppose that we don't need any operating system support. Then CPU will CPU. Let's suppose do fetch decode. And let's suppose here we don't need any operating system. Okay. Execute. Let's suppose this decode, uh, for the, in the decoding phase, uh, we have just very simple, uh, uh in the, oh, sorry, in the execution phase, we have very simple thing, which is a, a equal to B plus C that could be done using, uh, using ALU, right. Where we don't need operating system support C equal to C equal to a plus B. Okay. So that can be done using ALU. We don't need any operating system support here. I mean, I will tell you that, uh, in the execute phase, if it is, let's suppose print F. Okay. In, in that condition, we, we might be needing operating system support. Why? Because you are printing on the monitor, which is again, an external device, which is not a CPU. So CPU doesn't own that monitor, right? So CPU has to ask the permission to the monitor that can I print it? And that is done by operating system. Okay. Uh, is this, is this okay to everyone that uh, currently uh, we don't need operating system support here. What do I mean by that? That we have very simple instructions and we don't need it. Is this okay? And why printf need operating system support? I mean, currently we don't have OS uh, that I agree, but still like uh, in, uh, in general, why we need operating system support for the printf because 
CPU does not own the monitor, right? Monitor is external device, which is called IO device. Okay, so CPU has to take permission from the monitor that is done by operating system. Okay, can you can you see this particular diagram here? Uh, this is a, I mean, a small diagram of CPU here. Do you see monitor inside the CPU? Do you see monitor? No, right. I mean, CPU doesn't have monitor. That is, I, I hope that is clear. I mean, uh, that is obvious that CPU doesn't have monitor. So monitor is external, right? So monitor, since monitor is external, that's why CPU has to take the permission of that. And that is done using the system call. Yes, someone has rightly pointed it out, but uh, we don't need system call in today's lecture. Tomorrow we will talk about the system call. But anyway, so that is done using the system call. But yeah, I mean, uh, if there's an operating system, then CPU will take the help of operating system. If there is no operating system, then manually we need to uh, grant the permission. Anyway, so coming to this particular program, which is very small program, let's suppose uh, this program is some C program, which is maybe calculate dot C. Okay. Suppose this program is calculate dot C. Now you compile it and then you got a dot out. Now you don't have operating system, right? Till now life was easy. So you have the compiler here, right? So till now it was easy. Now you don't have operating system. Now what you need to do? You need to manually set the program counter to the start of main function. Now someone has asked us that, uh, how do we know the start of main function? Right? I think, uh, let me just quickly see the doubt. Yeah. So how we will know the start of main without, or without operating system. That's what I'm saying. So basically this structure is well defined. Okay. okay. So if, if operating system is there, operating system can, uh, can, I mean, will be aware of this structure. If operating system is not there, then we should be aware of that structure. Obviously. Right. I mean, as a human also, we need to know if operating system is not there. If we are going to run this manually, we need to know where is the main function. Right. We need to, we need to ask this compiler that, okay, where you, you are writing the main function, right? Where you're writing the function instruction of the main function. Okay. So let me just continue. So basically you will be setting, uh, setting the PC. You will be, CPU will be doing this task. You will be incrementing the PC. Right. You will be incrementing the PC and, and these things you will be doing it manually. Now, suppose, suppose instead of, instead of this a small program, I mean, here you just need three things, but instead of this program, you have printf. I mean, uh, instead of that, let's suppose you have printf where, where, what you will be doing manually, what you have to do. Can you tell me if there is no, no operating system, obviously the you know, normal thing that, uh, setting up the PC, right? Initial setup of PC. initial PC setup, right? So please don't ask any unnecessary doubt. Like you are asking why we need operating system. That's what I'm even telling. Like even everyone is aware about it, that what I'm going to tell, right? So that's what I'm telling that why we need operating system. Okay. This is the, uh, this is the, like on, on a way to motivate the idea of operating system only. So we need, uh, like CPU will be doing fetch decode execute. And in this, in this execution, we again need operating system, right? But manually, since we don't, in, don't, don't have operating system. So manually grant the permission manually grant permission to PC, uh, to, um, monitor. Okay. And incrementing the PC. So these are the small, small things that we need to do, right? So this is a very small program, but suppose that this is not the only program. You have two programs with you and you are running two programs and that too manually. Okay. So let's suppose you are running 
टू प्रोग्राम्स विदाउट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम देन वॉट यू नीड टू डू यू नीड टू टेक अ पेन एंड पेपर फर्स्ट राइट वाई बिकॉज आई विल टेल यू सो टेक पेन पेपर फॉर बुक कीपिंग बुक कीपिंग मीन्स that you are going to load like i will tell you that uh, what do i mean by running uh, multiple programs but for now just understand that you are going to lo load this program one here and program two here right in the main memory so you need to know that program one reside from where to where isn't it so you, you need to know this the program this is the program one this is the program two otherwise otherwise there will be a huge problem if you even lose that lose that uh, particular track that where is a program one where is a program two right so you need to basically uh, keep that bookkeeping and obviously like i mean whatever the, whatever this is doing let's suppose the program one wants to wants to print print something then manually what you need to do check if printer is already in use right this is bookkeeping for uh, where is program 1 where is program 1 in main memory where is program 1 in main uh, program 2 in main memory right so this is bookkeeping for all of these things so this is called this bookkeeping is called memory management okay this bookkeeping like where is the program one where is the program two and uh, and where to load the program where to uh, i mean there are many things like uh, uh, memory protection and all so in simple words i can i can tell you for now that this bookkeeping is called memory management like like we need to manage the memory manually is this clear to everyone we need to manage the man memory manually right this is called memory management this is called can anyone tell me what this is called i mean you can call it resource management isn't it iu device management something like that i mean you are you are managing the resources that okay uh, this printer uh, printer is being used or not this is called resource management so that's what you need to do manually resource management right so basically what is happening here that if you don't have operating system then you have to do all of these things you have to do all of these things manually right you need to load the pc you need to uh, like uh, whenever whenever operating system is needed if you don't need operating system then all of those tasks has to be done manually okay is this clear to everyone now tell me tell me are all of these tasks that we are talking about here which is bookkeeping resource management or whatever other management security and all all of these tasks are these tasks only limited to me as a user or these are some general purpose tasks that some other user might also be wanting or there is some special super human who only want to uh, only want to have this kind of privilege what i'm saying that is this having huge case uh, to different users or only limited to one or two users or to the whole world whatever is written here right this is very much general purpose right so so what i'm saying uh, trying to say here is that that all of these things right all of these things we just talked about talked about are not limited to any special person right or some super superman this is not not limited to any superman or any special person so basically all of these are general things right
that every user want to do okay now uh, just for the sake of example uh, i don't know if you have uh, if if you have uh, see, seen that or not but uh, okay there is someone okay i will read out the right, doubts later so have you seen uh, master theorem in algorithm okay so there is something called master theorem right i'm uh, like as it's not necessary for the operating system but what, what i'm like to uh, what do i would like to tell that do you know that master theorem has its own shortcut that uh, if uh, i mean uh, if the uh, recurrence is in certain format which means t n by b plus some some certain format and then then uh, we will be comparing uh, some functions like uh, like that right we will be comparing some functions and based on that uh, based on that we will be we will be uh, saying that okay what is this tn do do you remember that can anyone tell me that uh, why we are having master theorem because we see it very often yes it is a very common form this recurrence is very common actually i mean in divide and conquer if you have seen the algorithm in divide and conquer in in um, yeah mostly in divide and conquer only in divide and conquer or when, whenever we have the rec rec recursive relation the mostly mostly in the rec recursive relation we have this kind of formulation then people said that okay if you are having this kind of formulation then why not to uh, basically why not to directly have one formula right i mean why to calculate it again and again that's what people said and that's that's where the sorry so that's where the master theorem got uh, got derived right okay uh, just give me a second let me plug in the charger okay so uh, you can hear me right so what i'm saying is that that when whenever people saw that okay there are uh, there is certain thing which is getting repeated again and again which is useful to uh, i mean a wide range of people then why not to do it once right so that's why people people have uh, derived this master theorem and similarly i can say that whenever something is uh, is needed for almost everyone then why not to do it once so people said that okay uh, let's not do all of this manually let's write a program that could be could be uh, uh, i think um, exactly i obviously don't know but uh, i think it started with uh, 10 lakhs of line of code for the first operating system 1 million line of code okay and now today i think it is uh, maybe uh, 200 lakhs or something like that uh, lines of code maybe 20 million life, lines of code anyway so basically people said like let's write out some complex so some big code uh, however line it takes but it will be just one time uh, one time task so that's why we need operating systems right is the need clear to everyone that why we why, why we are needing operating system because of two reasons one is that these these all of the tasks that we are talking about are very much repetitive everyone needs it right everyone need it and also manually even though everyone need it, but still the uh, still if we ask the user to manually do it, then they have to be first of all computer scientist. I mean, not everyone every every naive user can't can't do it, right? They have to be computer scientist. They they uh, they have to know what is this program counter. They have to uh, they they have to know the uh, nitty gritty details of computer science, right? So basically, if I say that why we need operating system, then I can list out few reasons. manually too hectic right second reason is that uh, these tasks are very very common to everyone right Third reason could be that even 
okay okay this is like uh, the reason that i'm listing out but still even um, even if you do manually if we ask users to do it manually then first they need to become computer scientist right yeah they will throw away the computer in that case yeah nobody will be using it so it want to be a, a normal user computer in that case right so basically these are the obviously like very natural reasons that why we need operating system now uh, obviously like there are different versions like how it has started let me just tell you so uh, i hope the motivation is clear to everyone that uh, why we need operating system because running a small program could be uh, could be very much hectic so now you know that why we need operating system right cool now uh, let's just uh, let's just talk about uh, the things that what operating system can do okay so uh, let me just read it uh, one doubt sir can you please use the white background to write as it good good printing no uh, i'm sorry white background is not possible because uh, watching the lectures in the white background is basically uh, uh, is basically not suitable for the eyes right it is very much a strain on the eyes so uh, white background uh, what we prefer to much people if you want to print it then you can reverse the color so there are uh, there are many websites uh, that is called invert 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 the color okay invert color you can invert the color for the pdf and then you can you can print it if, if you really want to print it okay you can invert the color for the pdf and then you can print it okay uh there is one more uh, question this is a probably a dumb question but so many of the, uh, so many so of those 20 million lines would be just following so many standards what percentage of the code will be essential functionality even though the lines of code is a doubtful metric but how big is minimalistic os these days so it eventually get uh, i mean added so basically it's not like that they have started with uh, those many lines of code based on the functionality it, it depends on uh, what is the trade off like if you if you implement too much of functionality in the operating system then maybe the overhead will also be too much right so it it must be the optimal like it cannot be too much of the functionality in the operating system it at the same time it cannot be the minimal functionality so it is it is a trade off okay so what what does the operating system does like what do you think based on the observation that we have seen currently many things right many things it's just like a manager yeah it's just like a manager it's like it's like a government yes so basically <laughs> uh, our slavers in a, so basically i can say it uh, manage manage memory okay it manage resources which is io devices uh there is something called file system i will tell you i mean this manage file system i will tell you uh, in just a minute that what is this file system right yeah so himanshu is saying naam naam ek and kaam anek <laughs> yes so a uh, like operating system does actually many of the things we have the slide so i will i will tell you what what all the things it does and uh, most importantly what what is it is doing it is making the life easy isn't it it is making life easy in the sense that it can run it can do many of the things on our behalf right it can do many of the things on our behalf okay what what do i mean by that making the life easy or many of the things on our behalf is that that whatever is the hardware right basically the hardware could be cpu could be io device could be any other secondary storage i mean secondary hard drive or something whatever is the hardware these are the hardware components we don't need to deal with the hardware directly we want to run our program which is let's suppose calculate dot c calculate dot out or c okay whatever so we want to run this this program on this hardware that was that was our objective right now 
now we don't need to do it directly as, as I'm saying it. So what we can do, we can use operating system to do this task, which means if we want to run this calculate.c on this hardware, then what will I do? Will I done, uh, run this uh, without operating system? I don't, uh, I don't need to do it because we can use the operating system. So in between what, what can happen? Operating system can help us. Operating systems. Right. So let me just go to the next slide. So basically now you know why we need operating system. It is basically providing a beautiful interface to the application programs. I mean, whatever it is, maybe calculate dot C. Okay. So I don't know if the images are clear or not, but, uh, it seems like a queue. It is like a Taj Mahal, some, some monument or something like that. It is a peacock. Okay. Some, it, these are the flowers probably. Okay. So basically, uh, basically this is some, something, some beautiful interface and uh, this is some ugly interface and uh, ugly things that we have to deal with the hardware. So we don't need to deal with I mean, as an application pro program, which is calculate.c, uh, this calculate.c on, on top of that, this is the user, right? So user has written uh, the calculate.c then user don't need to, or the calculate.c don't need to directly deal, deal with the hardware. There is the operating system, which will help us. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a summary that what operating system can do. Now let's just talk about the first version of the Unix. I mean, how they have thought about the operating system. So this is a very successful operating system, uh, in the, I mean, um, in the sense that before that there has been the operating system, but they were, uh, very miserably failed. Okay. So, uh, I don't remember the names, but I think, uh, OS 360 was one of the operating system, which failed miserably. It, uh, I mean, before, uh, before the units, there has been, uh, some, uh, some trials of the operating system, some efforts of the operating system, but they failed very badly. This OS 360 was one of the operating system that got, uh, I think more than more than thousand major works. Okay. But you can say that this is the Unix, the first version of the Unix is, is the one of the very, very first successful attempt of the operating system. Right. Yeah. Before that, the punch card used to be there. Uh, I mean, um, be, before the operating system, uh, we used to have the punch card and there also like uh, a bit of the operating system uh, functionalities were there, but yeah, this, the first version of the Unix is we're having, I can say that uh, most of the functionalities that, uh, that any user might be needing. Okay. So let me just tell you that uh, what uh, this first version of the Unix had in their mind. Okay. So this is a bit of history. I, I, I might not be hundred percent correct, but uh, I think there were only two to three people. Okay. Developed it. And that too, in, I think two to three years. Just few people developed it. Okay. Now, uh, now what they have the, in their mind initially, um, is like that. So basically they were having, they were saying that there is an operating system and what I will do as a part of operating system inside the operating system, I will provide some function that is called like, I mean, as a, for the user, I, I can ask user to run any program. Okay. On the hardware. So I will say that there is some, something called interactive cell. Okay. I will, I will talk about it later, but yeah, for now understand there is something called cell, which is inside the operating system code itself. Right? So they were saying that I am having some shell or some command prompt or some terminal. You can understand like that where a user can write any, uh, any command that they have specified, like what, what sort of command that you can write based on that, they will run the program. Okay. So this is the very first implementation of the Unix. So let's suppose you want to run any browser. Then what do you need to write here? Let's suppose uh, there is some browser name. You just write browser. Then what is this browser? This is a file name. Okay. Executable file name. Executable file name. You just write the executable file name here. 
and then what operating system will do operating system will search okay operating system will search this file inside the uh, second storage and then it will load in the main memory okay so whatever the file name you are writing here as a command then operating system after you put the file name then operating system will search for the file from uh, secondary storage inside the i mean uh, search for the file inside secondary storage and will load it to the main memory okay i hope that is okay to everyone now i mean uh, this was the very very first idea then uh, i mean it was it was not uh, it was not not this only thing they have also implemented a file system and all so what is the file system i can i, I can just tell you in just one line so i mean we will we will be having a file system as a separate topic also let me just tell you see can you see the file systems here so this is a this is a separate topic that we will be studying in depth that what is the file system okay in depth you will get to understand that what is the file system but uh, for now i'm just telling you one thing is this clear that can you see this file system as a topic name inside the gate syllabus itself okay this is the this is the job of operating system operating system has to implement the file system right but uh, but since i'm i just named it so let me let me just talk about it so basically there is a secondary storage right inside the secondary storage multiple files are getting stored right i mean you are going to store multiple files multiple files file 1 file 2 like that now what operating system does operating system is responsive uh, is responsible for for what is responsible for managing this files which means where is file 1 first of all right First of all, how to store these files, right? How to store file, which means are you going to store in the contiguous way or you are going to store some part of the file one here and some part of file one here, right? I mean, in the, uh, in the discontinuous way, are you going to store like that? So basically there are different, different file systems that we will study later, but yeah, how to store is one of the, uh, one of the thing that operating system is responsible, which means are you going to store this contiguous way or maybe non contiguous way right and where is file 1 these kind of things operating system is responsible file 1 where is file 2 how big is file 1 directories i mean inside uh, inside one directory you can put multiple files like that i mean we will study this file system later but yeah this first version of the units had the basic functionalities which was very successful even in today's uh, operating systems like windows right macintosh uh linux these operating systems has taken very much uh in, like inspiration from this uh, first version of unix uh i mean many of the functionalities of the windows and mostly about the linux basically uh many uh, linux also have many variants but uh, mostly about the uh, uh ideas of the linux has been inspired from the unix only okay so unix inspired these things and we will we will understand this in the file system also like uh, i will tell you that these are the basic file system that uh, unix had earlier and windows windows had uh, windows took inspiration from this particular idea of unix and implemented uh, some file system like this mac mac took some uh, idea from the unix and implemented file system like this so basically these uh, these all of the operating system that we see in today's world are basically somewhat in inspired from the unix only okay okay so uh like uh, as in history you don't need to know that who developed it or who in how many uh, years they developed it but if, if i remember correctly then the, this is the states okay so basically i mean this is the very first version of unix where they said like you can put you can tell me which uh, uh which uh, file to run or which uh, particular executable file you want me to run and then i will run this right 
So let me just uh, explain this in more detail. Okay. So this is what the very first version of the Unix was saying. Now let's suppose you ask a browser to run. Okay. Uh, which means let's suppose maybe, maybe you are having any browser, you are, you are, you are having any MP3 player or whatever, right? So you ask any, any particular program to run, then what will happen? This program will run here. Let's suppose it is running. Okay. Uh, maybe any browser. Okay. Can everyone mute themselves? I think I already did it. Okay. So let's suppose this browser is running. Then, uh, then what will happen? Then again, this, uh, uh, when this browser get, uh, executed completely, which means either, uh, in the, in the windows, let's suppose you have a cross button, right? I mean, this is the interface uh, using the interface. We can just exit it or uh, the browser itself, or maybe some other program can, can, uh, can exit by themselves. Right. Or, or you, you press the cross button or something like that. So basically once, uh, once it get executed, this execution is finished, then automatically they will be calling some system call or something uh, like we will talk about the system call later, but they, they will call something called an exit. Okay. Then it means that exit will do one thing. Exit will destroy this particular program and then will basically return to the cell again. Okay. I mean, these are the few functionalities that they have implemented uh, to, uh, to start with. Do shell contains name of only executable files. Cell doesn't contain anything. It's just a part of operating system. Initially it was a part of operating system. Now they have even removed this from the operating system. They are treating the cell just like another program. I will tell, uh, uh, talk about it, but the cell doesn't have any list. It is just saying that, okay, give me a, it is a saying that give me, give me a name of executable file. Okay. If you are not giving the executable file name, if you are giving something which is not executable, uh, like they, they must have implemented some error, right? They, they will say that, okay, I cannot read this file because operating system can read only op executable files because they need to run this. They need to execute it. So basically shell is just saying, give me a name of executable file. Once you give it, then what the, what shell will do? I think I've written it here. Once you, after you put the file name, then what, what shell will do? OS will search for the file inside the secondary storage and will load it to the main memory and will start running it. Okay. So shell is just saying that it is just some, uh, some part of operating system, which where you can just put the file name. It is saying that give me a file name. I will start executing it. Is this okay to everyone? Okay. Now later, uh, they implemented shell as a part of, uh, I mean, normal program. So later in the different versions. So basically they, they said uh, like the shell can even be implemented without operating system. I mean, uh, you don't need to write this code inside uh, as a part of operating system code. You can have it outside the operating system. Maybe, maybe that is to reduce the complexity of the operating system. Maybe right. Because operating systems, uh, if you have more functionality, it will, if you, if you implement more things, it will be more and more complex. So they said that, okay, let's do one thing. Let's, let's write the shell as a normal program. I mean, shell, I mean, the, it's just same thing. I mean, this diagram where the shell inside the operating system code, I mean, operating system itself is a code, right? So shell inside the operating system code or, or now uh, shell outside the operating system code, both are the same thing. It's just a different versions. Okay. They've just put this code outside later. Okay. So now, I mean, now they said that, okay, this, since this shell is also just one program. So you can, again, put the, any program name, may, maybe again, the browser browser and then they will start running the browser now there are uh i mean many many interesting thing which is called fork and exit like i will tell all about it later fork and exit but uh, uh basically okay let me just ask you one question see shell is a just like a normal program and let's suppose you can run only one program at a time now if you run this browser don't you have to kill the shell don't you have to uh terminate the shell if you can run only one program, shell is a program and browser is a program. Can there be two programs? If let's suppose I can only run one program. Uh, are you getting my question? <laughs> so my question is that my question is that shell is a program. Browser is another program. I'm asking shell to run browser. Now, the moment I start running the browser before that, I have to kill shell, isn't it? So basically, basically. 
I have to kill shell. I mean, there is no way. Okay, I have to kill shell, and I will tell you that how to kill shell. I mean, I have to definitely kill shell. Shell, run browser. Browser. Again, again, uh, run. I mean, uh, kill kill browser whenever it is finished. Basically, exit browser. Browser again, run shell. Okay, again, run shell. So basically, all of these steps are done by fork and exec system calls that we will talk about. This is very nice story about the fork, uh, working of the fork and exec. We will talk about it later. But for now, just understand that uh, I mean, there was first operating system which was Unix, and they they developed the Unix and which was very successful one. Okay. Now, uh, now let me talk about that. What should there be in the operating system? So I think we talked about this that we we must be uh, what what operating system uh, should implement. Maybe you can say the memory manager. You can say uh, security. I mean, security in the sense, if you are running multiple programs, how to run multiple programs, these things I will talk about. But if you're running multiple programs, then one program cannot write to another program like that, right? Yeah, file management. Has everyone understood what do I mean by file management? Can anyone tell me what is meant by file management? Can you tell me what is meant by file management? Yes, how to store and access. Yes, these things. Yeah, right. So basically, see, um, yeah. So basically, these things are called file management. I mean, uh, doing all of this is called file management, right? Where to store, how to store these things. We will we will definitely study later. Okay. Yeah. How to retrieve and uh, oh, choti choti hai, like uh, I mean, uh, how to retrieve and also you can you can think about that. Uh, uh, you should not l uh, lose the access to the data, right? You should not lose the file access. You should not overwrite the file, uh, one file to another file. There are uh, little, little things that you need to manage. So that's all com comes under the file management. Okay. All of this comes under the file management. I mean, these are, these are the little, little things that you need to manage. All of these comes, comes under the file management. Yeah. So what other things? Pradeep is writing memory management, process management. Yes. Process management means that which process you are currently running. Okay. If there are, if there is, let's suppose only one process you can run at a time, which means if you have only one CPU, Okay, so you can run only one process at a time. So we will talk about uh, some scheduling mechanism where you will be understanding, but for now I'm just writing it process management. Basically, you need to manage the process scheduling, right? Which process to run and these things, right? Process management. You need to do many of the things. And uh, this these all things should come comes under operating system. Now, this is a slide from Galvin. So what they're saying, what operating system do, uh, we can view operating system as a consisting of hardware, software, and data. The operating system provides the means for the proper use of these resources in the operation of computer system. An operating system is similar to government. Like a government, it performs no useful. <laughs> okay. Like a government, it performs no useful function by itself. Okay. It doesn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't perform any, any useful function by itself. It simply manages the things, uh, it, it provides a security government is responsible for our security. I mean, ideally it is responsible for our, uh, safe well-being, but yeah. So basically it is saying that it is just like a government, which provides the security, right? Managing resources. So basically like we are paying paying the taxes, right? And after the taxes, like whatever the resources that are, uh, that are, that government own, that uh, government has to manage all of those resources also like government. Um, yeah. So, so, okay. I don't know if that analogy is perfect or not, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, we have to pay tax to the government, right? The government and here to the operating system. 
uh if if there is some i mean the rich people no, pay the tax right i mean if we, if you are uh, coming under the um tax slab then you are going to pay the tax and for the operating system you are you are going to say that complex process pay the overhead i mean they 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 lead to the overhead complex functionalities you can say complex functionalities of the operating system right complex functionalities okay cool so there is one question uh if cpu runs only one uh single program then how does multiple programs run with say four cores per gen generation device yeah four cores means four cpu itself okay four core itself means that you have four cpus right if you are having four cores then you can at a time you can run four programs okay i mean no you don't need to run a one program you you can definitely run four programs okay so let's see one example here what is happening that uh, this is a screenshot from 10 in one if i remember correctly uh 10 in yeah 10 in one this is a screenshot from 10 in one so these are the three processes and what we are doing if you see then uh let's suppose this is this is a block okay i mean the gray area is only the running area mm. no uh this this area is is the running area and gray area is the blocked area okay this is the block yeah so now as you can see this these are the three program i mean this is just one picture that we will talk about later but uh but uh for today's class if you just see this picture and uh, just get one idea then it is okay so as you can see that this is running and let's suppose in the main memory these three programs are there okay i mean these are called processes we will talk about what are the processes later so process one two and three but this is in the main memory but it doesn't mean that all of them are running okay it doesn't mean that all of them are running only one only one process will run at one time if you have just one cpu if you have just one processor okay if you have just if you have just one processor or one cpu then only one of them will be running at a time now see as you can see process one is running and at that time this is blocked this is blocked now process two is running at that time this is blocked this is blocked now process one is again running at that time this is blocked this is blocked now process three is running at that time this is blocked this is blocked now whenever this is uh this is running at that time i mean this is finished anyway at that time this is blocked and then uh, this is running so basically if you see at one time at one time only one of them is running okay at one time only one of them is running so sometimes this is running for some reason this is blocked okay we will talk about the reasons later uh there are there are there are, there are non, i mean different reasons uh, why the process uh, can go from running state to block state we will talk about these later but for now just understand this picture what is happening here at one time if you have just one processor okay if you have just one processor at one time only only one process is running if this is running this is block this is block right okay so if uh here only one tick here only one tick in this slot only one tick in this slot only one tick have you understood so maybe i can write it more clearly see what i'm saying let me uh just try dividing that in the slots okay so in this slot tell me how many are running only this is running right in this slot only this is running 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 and similarly in this slot only this is running so only one is running at one time no slots are not clock cycles clock cycles are very small slots could be quite big in in one slot there are multiple clock cycles okay in one slot there is there is a multiple clock cycles what's converting os code to executable files again the compiler okay so compiler will be converting that os code to executable file
Okay, so uh, Himanshu is saying my four core CPU can't run more than four programs simultaneously, but we can have multiple tiles processing. Yeah, so basically, I mean, this happens so, so concurrently that you want to be even realizing that there are, uh, these are not running simultaneously. Okay. So, I mean, this clock cycles and these slots are uh, in the milliseconds. So you won't be even realizing as a human eye that these are, I mean, you will think that, okay, I mean, as virtually you will think that's why we also call operating system as a virtualization. Okay. I mean, it provides the virtualization. Provides virtualization. Okay. So basically virtually, uh, we will think that all of this, all of these are running simultaneously, but, but it doesn't happen that way. Yes. All of this are basically done by scheduling. Okay. So how we are, how we are switching from here to here, this is scheduling dependent that we will study later. Yes, uh, your uh, four core CPU cannot run more than uh, more than four uh, four programs simultaneously, um, but it seems like that you are doing it simultaneously. Okay. OS itself is a code, right? Operating system itself is a code. So basically, all of this that operating system is doing is basically because of the code only. So operating system is basically you can say, I mean, uh, maybe you can say. It's a, uh, a 10 lakhs of line of code. Okay. So today we will just uh, wrap up. I mean, with this uh, introduction only that what is operating system and why we need operating system and all. Now, whatever doubt you have, just, uh, you know, I mean, I will just suggest you to uh, hold your doubts for now because you will be, because the subject is like that, you will be asking the how, doubts from here and there. So for now, just uh, go through this particular lecture. And if there is any lecture specific doubt, you just ask me and there will be other doubts that you will be having in your mind. I'm hundred percent sure. Just hold it for two, three lectures. Okay. Just for one, two lectures at max, just hold it automatically. It will get clear. Okay. Because we will be covering in that way only. So tomorrow we might be talking about the system calls and all and uh, most interesting system call, as I, uh, as I said, like these are the fork and eject system call. There are something called fork eject pair system call. That is very nice uh, pair of system call that we will talk about and how, how the system call is helping us to run the programs. Okay. So today we mostly talk about, uh, mostly talk about the, uh, need of operating system, why we need operating system, the motivation of operating system. Okay. I don't get the working of browser and not shell. Okay. So basically, I mean, browser is nothing. It's just a one, one file name, whatever. Let's suppose calculate dot C. Okay. You can just write calculate dot out, whatever the file name, you just uh, write the file name. It was the first version where they said, like you write the file name and then based on the file name, I will load that file in the main memory. So basically this is what they are saying that. You tell me the file name and I will load that file after you put the file name, then OS will, uh, will search for the file inside the secondary storage and will load in the main memory. Okay. Cool. So if there is any other doubt, then you can let me know. Will this subject be completely live? Uh, yes, it, it will be mostly be live live. Okay. If there are a few videos that I need to put, uh, put recorded, then I will be putting the recorded, but mostly it will be live. Do we have OS classes? Yes. All the OS classes will be live. So at that time shall, we... yeah, at that time shall will not, I mean, shall, uh, yes. If some program is running, then shall will not be running. We will talk about it. Don't worry. I, I got to doubt. We will talk about it tomorrow. Maybe it will be clear after, after the fork and exit system call. Okay. So don't worry about that doubt. It will be, it will be clear after fork and exit system call. We are creating executable code for the application. Yes. Yes. That is right. That is right. Uh, what's your name? Shavas. That is right. Operating system course. Uh, I think it will take uh, one month. Okay. 
yes we will talk about the uh, all all of the good pyqs in the lecture itself okay so if there is any other doubt uh, then you can ask me in the telegram group also okay so satyavrat you can ask this doubt in the uh, in the telegram group or otherwise just hold it for uh, for one or two days it will automatically get clear okay so it will automatically get clear after two days why we should kill the shell yeah do you don't need to kill the shell in that case i mean uh, exactly you don't need to kill the shell you can put that in the main memory yes that is right okay if you can interleave then yes that is right you can put in the main memory i mean you don't need to shell that uh, kill that pr program uh, exactly okay i mean it is basically implementation dependent however you want to implement there is no fixed rule that okay you you have to kill the shell or you have to do it i mean if you can manage without killing then obviously it is it is good i mean it depends on the on the application i mean how you are implementing okay so it will be one month uh, mostly it will be one month yes it will be uh, no classes want to be daily uh, it uh, i will i will tell you the days i mean uh, i am planning uh, four to five days in a week for operating system and uh, two two days uh, for the uh, for the uh, for deepak class okay okay so thank you everyone no classes actually uh, will be in the evening only because some of the students has requested to keep it in the evening yes yes right okay thank you everyone Take care. Bye-bye.